Hello, my name is Patrick. I'm the uh, minister of the Touch of God ministry, and I welcome you today for this wonderful encounter, wonderful word that the Lord has put in me to just release to his wonderful people, and even those who, who I didn't get saved, but I pray that by the, by the time, I believe by the time this message is over, even doing this message, God is going to touch you, God's going to get you saved, God is going to love upon you and just empower you with this message, you know. One of the uh, one of the, one of the wonderful things in the Bible that is dear to my heart, you know, is the wonderful Holy Spirit. He's you know, he's our comforter. He he's our intercessor. He's our helper. He's an advocate. He's our standby. The Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus to to be to as the Word of God said to be in in the place of Jesus. That's why he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So he sent the wonderful Holy Spirit to be by our side, to lead us and guide us. That we that we're not orphans, that we're not, you know, lost. That the Holy Spirit will always be by our side and help us. And even as I'm I'm saying this, to, you know, because the Holy Spirit is very dear to my heart. The presence of God, the Holy Spirit is very dear to my heart. And I pray that as, as I'm preaching, teach this word, that the Holy Spirit will touch you. And that you will have an encounter with God. That you will experience the love of God. That you will have joy, peace, and love in the Holy Ghost. And that you will see the presence of You will ex not just see it, experience it. That's why, again, I call my ministry the Touch of God Ministry, you know. That one touch... One encounter from God, it will change you. And I believe that even as I release this word right now, today, that you're going to have an encounter. That you're going to be touched. You're going to be healed. You're going to be delivered. You're going to get saved, healed, and delivered. And you're going to draw near, closer to God. So let's go deep into the word. Now, whew, can't wait. Uh, John 14, 27, the Amplified. But the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and, and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and He will cause you to recall, remind you and bring to your remembrance everything I told you. you know, the Holy Spirit is our friend. And you know, and we have to, we have to, I say this right now. We have to stand for our friend. We have to, you know, I think a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of churches has, you know, belittle the things of God, belittle the Holy Spirit. The power to heal, the power to deliver, the power of the nine gift of the Spirit, the power, the, the, the intimacy. The Holy Spirit draw us closer to Jesus. And I, th I think many times ministers, you know, they, they devalue the anointing, the Holy Spirit, they, they devalue the presence of God. And from devaluing it, they, there's a lost connection. So, you know, if you, remember, you can't receive from, from something you devalue. And, you know, and I see that a lot in, in some churches, you know, and I pray that, that you will know that the Holy Spirit is your friend. He leads you, He guides you. He draw you closer to God. He makes the word of God here, this this wonderful word of God, come alive in you, so that you don't you, you don't feel helpless, you know, and that you could trust in the prompting and leading of the Holy Spirit. You could trust in the word of God, you know. And I, I like this, you know. That's why you see the the wonderful names that have for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to comfort you, Counselor, to help you, to the Intercessory, the Advocate that be by your side, the Strengthen, to strengthen, the stand by, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in the name of Jesus, in in the place of Jesus Christ, He will teach you, teach me, He'll teach me and teach you all things. He will cause you to remember. He'll bring to your remembrance everything that Jesus said. Especially in this age, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the presence. We need the guidance and leader hope. We need the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit. We cannot walk away. We cannot go into intellectualism. We cannot go into you know what we think. We have to go by the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will only confirm 
the word of God. He's not going to confirm man's ideas, opinions. If a person's heart towards the Holy Spirit is not a good heart, you know, it's almost like if you feel like you, you, you know, I remember one time I was in a place, you know, uh, doing something for someone, you know. I felt uh, this person, like, it's almost like the person, like, oh, they didn't feel like, you know, it, you know when you feel you're not invited? And that, that, was, that was the feeling for me when I was, you know, helping this person. And I was like, oh, you know, I felt that. And I was like, oh, man, you know. And I just, like, next time I just didn't. It's up because it's like if you feel you you know, you know you're not invited, why would you why you would come? Many times in churches, ministers cater to the flesh, cater to man, and basically and they devalue the Holy Spirit as I spoken earlier. So now it's almost like you know if the Holy Spirit come and touch people, they'll get mad. And, oh, you know why I get them? Let the Holy Spirit move. Let Him touch God's people. Let Him love upon God's people. Allow Him to flow in you and through you. That's the importance of the Holy Spirit. For Him to move in you and through you. So, that's why it's very important. To just, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead you and guide you. Because the Bible said He's your comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strength, and standby. Who Jesus has sent to us in the replacement of Jesus. To represent Jesus and act on, on Jesus' behalf. The Holy Spirit, one of the key things that the Holy Spirit wants to, the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to lead you and guide you. Allow him to lead you and guide you. Ezekiel 26, 36. Ezekiel 36, 27. Amplified. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my stature. And you shall heed my orders and do them. So when, hope, when God promised us in the book of Ezekiel that you know, the time is coming where he will pour his wonderful Holy Spirit in us. Because see, this is a temple. And when we gave our life to Jesus, okay, Jesus came to live in us, okay, by the wonderful Holy Spirit. So now Christ come to live in us. The Holy Spirit come to indwell in us. So with the Holy Spirit living in you, He'll lead you and guide you, okay. You you can hear from you, you can speak to God directly. You don't have to run to this prophet, run to this or or run to that. You could speak to God right here. If you're a child of God and you gave your life to Jesus, and you know you, you know you could speak to God. You have that. You have that for you. You have that access. Okay? Never allow anyone to devalue or say, oh, you know what? You, you need to go hear this special man of God to hear from God. In, in reality, you already heard from God. His word. You know, I like a, a wonderful man of God. I just, I love, I, re, you know, I respect, you know. You know. He said that, you know, someone came to him and said, hey, you know, I want to hear from God. He said, yeah, yeah, read the word. Because in reality, it's true. It's true. This is the word of God. This is God speaking to man, speaking to us, speaking to his people, okay, speaking to his children. And and that's why we, our job is to always uh, basically read his word, meditate on his word, confess his word, you know, what Jesus said, what Jesus did, what Jesus, you know, say. We have to know what that. Our focus has to always be on the word of God, not on the man's word. Now, you, you could ask for, for a person's opinion, and that's their opinion. You know. But then again, the word of God will remain forever. The word of God trumps man's opinion. So, the Holy Spirit wants to lead you and guide you. So, God, God promised us in Ezekiel 36, 27, that he'll put his wonderful Holy Spirit within you and I, and cause you and I to walk in his statue and we will heed we will do we will heed the the commandments of God that means we will not go around doing things we shouldn't be going around that's why many times when people who are filled and guided by the Holy Spirit if they know they're gonna do something that they're not supposed to do they'll they'll get a check in their hearts 
God will speak to them. I remember years ago um, when uh, I used to play the lottery years ago, and I remember the you know one time the Lord said, "Hey, you know, um, I, I would like you to stop playing the lottery." I was like, "Yeah, I could stop anytime." And to me, in my head, I was like, "Yeah, it's nothing. It's you know." It's... But then I didn't know that what God was trying to show me was how addictive the lottery was, how I had put my faith in the lottery. So then when when I did stop, I realized like, you know, I was walking around some bodegas and I felt like it's a pulling of the enemy trying to come, come here, come and buy the lottery. I was like, oh my God, you know, it shocked me. And then that, it just realized, it showed me how some people don't know how the things of the world could so easily come and snare them and grab a hold of them. You know, I remember a person I knew that, you know, this person used to smoke a lot of, a lot of cigarettes. And the person used to say, "Well, oh, I could stop any time," but she couldn't stop any time because she didn't. She, she in her head she thought she could, but since she was so addicted to the cigarette, it was like, "Oh man," you know. You say, "What's the remedy for this person to get saved, to get healed, to get delivered?" God will deliver her. God will get her saved. God will break that spirit of you know addiction. And if you do, ha you yourself dealing with personal addiction. God will break that spirit of addiction off of you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Allow the power of God to come and set you free from every addiction of the enemy. Whether alcohol, drugs, you know, pornography, anything, God will set you free. That's what the Bible said. He the Son sets free is free indeed. So John John 16, 12, 14. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Bear them, bear them, or take them upon you to, to grasp them. But when He, the Spirit of Truth, so one of the things is that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. That means everything He's going to tell you is the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. The Word of God is the truth. You know, and I'm going to be blunt. And the problem racism, the word of God, the gospel, this is the solution. Not 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 opinion, not political stuff, not laws. The gospel is the solution for racism, for hatred, for bitterness, for for the wicked things in the hearts of men. The gospel, the word of God. Okay? That's why you see that it's the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of truth. Okay? And the only thing he gives you is the truth. That's why you see when when how Jesus described the devil, he said, you know, it, all he wants, you know, he, the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. They call the, you know, the Bible called the devil the father of lies. That means everything that the devil does, even when he's trying to give you the truth, he's always lying. Okay, so if the devil represents lie, then the Holy Spirit, the wonderful Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, is the truth. He's the truth bringer. I feel that. <laughs> he'll bring you the truth. In your life, he'll lead you, he'll guide you. He'll not he's not going to hurt you. He's not going to, you know, you know, I know sometimes ministers will come and say, "Oh, he'll convict you." No. He'll convince you. Okay? He'll convince you where you're going, what you're doing, if it is wrong, that's not right. That's why many times people gotta realize is that that's why said, you know that that day with the whole lottery situation, he convinced me that oh you know playing the lottery will lead to an addiction. I was like I didn't know. So he'll convince you, okay? In love, the world he'll convict of sin because he t you know because that's that's the thing of the world. He'll convict the world of sin, but he'll convince the children of God the stuff that they're doing is not right. In love, you know. And he'll guide you into all truth. The whole truth and full truth. I love this. For he will not speak of his own message. That means he will not speak of his own authority. So everything that the Holy Spirit is going to tell you is from God. Is by his word. Okay. That means the Holy Spirit doesn't have his own agenda. He's like, well, you know, there's Jesus here and the Father here. I'm just going to do what I, what I want to do. No. He comes to do what what God, the Father, and the Son told them to do. And that's what he hear. 
He's here to confirm the word of God. He's here to illuminate the word of God. He's here to make the word of God come alive in you. He's here to lead you and guide you in your everyday life. So you don't feel that, oh, you know, like uh, hearing a, a testimony during the time of the, uh, the whole COVID thing. Now that things are coming up. Some people, you know, good friends of mine, how they, they were so hooked on watching the TV. And the TV was putting so much fear in them. And finally, they just felt in their heart to say, to just turn off the TV. And as they started turning off the TV, peace, love, joy started to come into their life. They started reading the Word of God, loving the Word of God. It's like, whoo, oh my God, the Word of God is wonderful. Like, they started growing in their faith. Okay, so you say, who told that person to turn off that TV? The mighty Holy Spirit. He spoke to that wonderful Christian person telling them that the television is putting fear in you. And you don't need fear right now. Because you'll never need fear. For God did not give you a spirit of fear. You know, but he has filled you with power, love, and a sound mind. So the Holy Spirit was protecting that person and also guiding them to not fall into something that the rest of the world is falling into right now. Right now, half the world, you know, I walk on the street of New York, people are losing their mind. Like, you know, they, they put on masks as if, you know, there's some bubonic plague. You know, and you know, and like, you know, they look at you running from you. Like, oh my God, he, he doesn't have a mask on. You know, that's all fear. Because the news, the media, just pump fear into people. Again, God did not give you and will never give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Let him fill you with power, love, and a sound. Let him fill you with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled. I need to be filled. We all need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the presence of God. We need, we need him even now. We need a mighty move, a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Every day, every hour, every second. The same way you drink, you drink water every day. You need to drink. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's very important. 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 Because the love of God will keep you strong. The love of God will empower you. Romans 5, God poured out his love as he poured out the Holy Spirit. Let him pour out his wonderful Holy Spirit in you. Allow him to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Allow him to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Because too many people out there are full of fear, worry, and insecurity. But because they're allowing the world, the wicked system the world, to put fear and doubt, insecurity in them. And worse... The shepherd who are supposed to be good shepherds, they themselves allow the, the enemy to put fear in them. So now they're popping fear into their own people. And it's, and it's sad. And it's sad. That's why I said we need to be filled. You need to be filled. You need to be filled, guided, controlled by the Holy Spirit. I like, you know, there's a scripture here. You know, Galatians. You know. Galatians. uh let me get it here. Galatians, uh, I'm going to pull it up right now. It's uh, 5.18. Yeah, Galatians 5.18. Another one of my wonderful scriptures regarding the Holy Spirit. You know, and I'm just going to read this right now. You know. Galatians 5.16 I say to you, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit is what is contrary to the flesh. They are conflict to each other so that you are not... You, you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led, if you are led and guided by the wonderful Holy Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh. Now a person that, that's full of the fear, worry... Of the world. This is anytime you see this right now, what I'm about to say right now, if you see someone walking or manifesting that, that means they're in the flesh, there's stuff on them or stuff in them that is not of God. I'm being honest here. The acts of the flesh are obvious sexual, more impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish, ambitious, vicious. Decision, dissension, sorry. 
faction and envy, drunkenness, orgies and likes. I warn you as I did before, the, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you see someone, you know, you see lustful thing coming out of them, it's like, whoa, bro, you're like you're Christian? Like, you know, that means there's stuff in them they never let God heal them of or deliver them out of, okay? If you see a person have jealousy, there's something in them they, they need to allow God to deliver them. God is love. God is holy. God is pure. The job of the wonderful Holy Spirit is to keep you holy, pure, and wonderful in the eyes of God. Not for these things to still control you even if you're a child of God. That's why we need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Say that. I need, I need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead me. Say that. Holy Spirit, lead me today. Lead me from glory to glory. Lead me in, lead me. Who? <laughs> Lead me in the morning, lead me at night, lead me from, you know, wherever I go. Lead me and guide me every day. Say that, Heavenly Father, lead me and guide me by your Holy Spirit every day, every hour, every, <laughs> every second, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I love you, Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Ghost. I love the Holy Ghost. But those who are led and guided by the Holy Spirit produce the fruit of the Spirit, okay? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearing, forbearing kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. As such, these things, there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ has crucified their flesh with its passion desire. Since we live by the Holy Spirit, let us keep in step with the wonderful Holy Spirit. And let us let our sota ra para teke la mona ra para te recite kepe to rosso to kota sana mambe rando kote sote. Let us not become conceited and provoking, envying each other. So that's why it's important to allow the prompting, the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to be to to a God to love you. God is a spirit. The Bible said those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Okay? Allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to make the Word of God come alive in you. One of the scriptures I love. I'm just gonna, you know, just flowing what, what the Holy Spirit is doing right now. You know, and I love this scripture, Luke, Luke 11, 9, 13. You know, and it's, ooh. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Luke, Luke 11, 9, 13. So I said to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Not it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and he who seeks, find, and to him who knock, it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? If he asks for fish, will he give him a serpent, a step? Or if he asks for egg, will he offer him? Scorpion, if you then be even know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will our heavenly Father, our heavenly Father? Yesterday was Father's Day, and I, Lord Father, right now. Yesterday was Father's Day. Happy, God, God. <laughs> happy Father's Day. Woo! To my heavenly Father. <laughs> How much more will our Heavenly Father, your Heavenly Father, give you the wonderful Holy Spirit to those who ask? And I like that scripture because it's direct. All you have to do is ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to fill you. Ask Him to lead you. Ask Him to guide you. Ask Him to, to make Himself real to you. The Holy Spirit is your friend. He's your comforter. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. Nothing. When you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you, He'll, and here's a wonderful scripture I love so much, you know. He will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. That means nothing will come upon you unaware. See, when this whole COVID thing happened, there were ministers and churches and even, you know, you know, regular believers who knew something was about to happen, but 
by the prompting and leading of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit prepared them. So that, you know, when this thing happened, they were like, oh my God, you know, COVID, where did it come from? And it just came like, you know, nowhere. And now, you know, you know, everyone get, oh, those, those who are not led by the Holy Spirit, unbelievers, you know, and those who don't allow, even Christians who don't allow the Holy Spirit, they're not going to know what's going to happen. That's why you see when, when I was watching a mighty man of God listen to uh, Rodney Howard Brown, when the whole thing was happening and closing, there were ministers asking him, is this the end? Is this, you know, are we about to be raptured? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, hey, you know. And then God spoke to him by the wonderful Holy Spirit. He had encountered and, and the word that the Lord gave him, you know, and that's why I said that, look, I love ministers and I love people who hear by, you know, by hear from God. But sometimes I think, too many times, people put their faith in what other people say, but not what the Word of God say. Okay? And I think that's the problem too much in the whole prophetic movement. They put too much faith in what people say. They're not hearing for themselves. If someone speaks to you something, it has to be confirmed. And the same that day when, when Rodney Howard Brown said that the end is not yet, it spoke to me. It wasn't just, oh, look at that. Rodney just said, you know, the end is not yet. Oh, hallelujah. No. The Holy Spirit will confirm, confirm what someone else is saying. Whether that person is saying by the Spirit of the Lord or whether they're not saying it by God. And when he, when Rodney said that, the power of God touched me too. And I was like, and I confirmed it. Yes, yes, he's right. So people got people to gotta learn to, to, to let the Holy Spirit lead them and guide them. I know some people, they want to go around, they want prophecy, but they don't realize that prophecy, again, gifts of prophecy, it come from the Holy Ghost, led by the Holy Ghost. So if someone is going around and, you know, and they're just giving word, are they giving by the Holy Spirit, by God, or are they giving by their head? That's why you see all the nine giving the Spirit are available to a child who are led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And I feel that right now by the, my spirit. Rosata mandre kitri se da rosso kara parandre se rosso to corre kitri resi kete se kete pirambo. So Father, right now, even now as I spoke in this word, I just feel by the Holy Spirit that let the nine gift of the Spirit come upon your people. Father, let the gift of the sermon, the gift of the sermon, come upon your children, come upon your people right now. Anoint them of with the gift of discernment that they'll discern the things that are of God and the things that are not of God. Right now, from their head to their feet, let the gift of discernment come upon your people afresh with the Holy Ghost. There it is, there it is. From their head to their feet. There it is. From, oh, there it is, there it is. <laughs> from their head to their feet. From their head to their feet. Anoint them afresh with the gift of discernment to discern the things out there, to discern from the news, you know, to discern demonic, to discern the heavenly realm. What is of God is what is not of God. In Jesus' name, I decree, declare that. I receive that for myself too. That's how I love the, that's why I love the Holy Spirit. You know, God, the Bible said God is not a respecter of person. What he does for one, he'll do it for another. You know, so, you know, he'll announce, he'll declare to you things to come. And when you lead, when you allow him to lead you and guide you, you'll never go wrong. Okay? He'll speak to you. You know, imagine going to a place where you're like, you know, like I remember a few weeks ago, I think two or three weeks ago, when, when this whole riot nonsense started, you know, like a friend of mine who was, you know, oh, you know, be careful, you go into the city and all that stuff. And, you know, and that's what the person was saying. And, I, and again, that's you know, nice, good advice from that person. But when I spoke to God, when I spoke to the wonderful Holy Spirit, He said, don't worry about it. You get to work there on time and you get back home safely and securely. And that's all that I needed. He's, he confirmed. He comforted me. And guess what? I'm here. <laughs> you know, because He wants to He's what to perform it. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. You could speak to God. God lives in you. The Bible says Christ lives in you, the hope of glory. You could all you have to do is put your hand in your heart. Father, speak to me. 
Speak to me. He'll speak to you more. And I right now I speak this by the Spirit of the Lord that the God is opening ears to hear and more by the Holy Ghost. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let your anointing to hear come upon your people in Jesus' name. That they'll hear you more. They'll hear you from the inward witness of the Holy Ghost. They'll hear your voice. They'll hear you clear by your word, by your wonderful word. That your word will come alive with them. Ooh, I love the word of God. Your word will come alive with them. There it is. Your word will be alive and come alive in them. In Jesus name. Ooh, thank you Jesus. I received that for myself. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Ooh, he will honor and glorify Jesus. He will take what is. He will take of. He will take. He will, he will take of and receive and draw upon what is Jesus and reveal it, declare it to you. So that everything that Jesus said, if you read, you know, the Gospels, if you read, you know, everything that the Word of God said, the Holy Spirit. See, that's why I tell people, read the Word, okay? As you read the Word, as you maintain your life in the Word, meditate on the Word and allow the Holy Spirit to continue to fill you. You will grow in power and authority and knowing what is of God and what is not of God. Revelation come. Look, revelation doesn't come from your head. Revelation come by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay? Revelation, there's a scripture in the Bible and, I, and another one I love, you know. Uh, let me get it right now. Uh, however, uh, what was it? First Corinthians Two, six. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rule of this age who are coming to none. But we speak wisdom of God in mystery, that hidden wisdom which God, which God ordained before the age of our glory, which now, which none of the rulers of the age knew. For had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord. For it is with eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard. Nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God, listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. But God has revealed to them, to us, through his wonderful Holy Spirit. For the Spirit search all the things. Yes. The deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is him. Even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world but the Holy Spirit who is from God. That we might know, know, experience, encounter the things that God has freely given to us. These things we also speak not in, not in words which man wisdom teach but which the Holy Spirit will teach you so again comparing spiritual thing with spiritual thing but the natural man does not receive the things of God okay the things of God the, the natural man does not receive the things of spirit of God for they are foolish to him nor can he knows and 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 I'll give you a good example okay of this is that wonderful minister in Tampa Rodney Howard Brown look at that you know, while a lot of churches, I would say 90% of the churches in the United States and all across, in, uh, across the world were shutting down in the beginning of this whole COVID nonsense, he was the only one that felt by God not to close down. To the point where, you know, they, they, his own you know, fellow brothers in Christ were mocking him, attacking him. Like, you know, oh, you're putting people at risk. Oh, they're all going to catch this sickness. All that nonsense. But then again, God used, was using Rodney to make churches essential. And all of a sudden, the whole, like, it just, once he got arrested, it went around the world. You know, CNN and all those, NNBC, they all said their stuff, you know. But right there. Now the the law came. Now, hey, churches are essential in the Constitution. You know, it, you know, it it became essential because if you look at it in the natural eyes of man, 
Why would this man do this? He's putting his people at risk. But then again, he's being led by the Holy Spirit. And God knew. That's why I see it. That's why I love that scripture. You see it. Here's a who. <laughs> oh God. Who? <laughs> Father, more of your anointing. More of your. But, you know, but we speak the wisdom of God in mysteries. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the age of the glory. If which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord God. So, when if people, see many people, you know, like I, I know some leaders are quoting, oh, you know, we got to use wisdom. What wisdom are they talking about? Are they talking about the wisdom of God or are they talking about the wisdom of men? Be honest. If you're quoting some scriptures and you say, well, you got to use wisdom. Are you using the wisdom of God? Because Rodney... He was being led and guided by the Holy Spirit to, 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 to make churches essential, to stand up for the gospel, to stand up for the word of God. So when you see all these others, oh, we got to, we got to, you know, Romans, some, you know, they're quoting Romans, you don't got to obey the government. They didn't even know that they, you know, the government is not your leaders. They're your representative in Congress. They are your representative. The, the law of the land is the Constitution. And the Constitution has a nice little on oh, it that says, you have a freedom of religion. So, a lot of these people have to know their own, you know, their own, the law of the land. They have to know, okay, if that scripture, Romans, you know, obey the government... Oh, obey the constitution. Oh, the constitution. I could have. Oh, okay then. I'm good. Uh, I'm gonna with the, with the word of God. I'm with the word of God. I'm gonna have church. And that, and that's why many times you know, like, and I think to me, this is you know, a lot of leaders and ministers were using that whole scriptural wisdom as an excuse of their own fear. Again, God did not give His children a spirit of fear. That's why I said, true wisdom come by the Holy Ghost. That's why I said, the, you know, the gift of the Spirit include, what is it? Word of wisdom. <laughs> you know, word of wisdom. Nine, one of the nine gifts of the Spirit is the word of wisdom. You know, supernatural wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. Not wisdom of man. That's why I said, if all those people in, in the old, in when Jesus was one, if they knew that Crucifying Jesus. This is what the scripture. If they knew that crucifying Jesus was gonna lead to the, to the destruction of the kingdom, you know, of Satan, they would never have done it. They're like, what? He's oh no, we we'll put him on an island. We'll put him on an island. Okay, we'll put 25, 250,000 warship around him, and just you know, every time he comes to come come out, put him back in the island. But again, God's wisdom is higher than man's wisdom. God's ways are higher than man. Who could know the mind of Christ? Who could know the mind of God? We have the mind of Christ, but by the Holy Spirit. That's why you see the Bible says God is a spirit. Those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hmm. Funny, it's right there. These things also speak not in the word, words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish, foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritual discern. But he who is spiritual judge all these things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one, for who... Who known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. You know? And and that's why I said that, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. He's going to lead you. God, When you allow God to lead you and guide you by the Holy Spirit, he'll lead you from glory to glory to glory. He'll lead you from victory to victory to victory. You'll never have a defeated day in your life. God will bless you. God will bless your socks off. He'll teach you how to. God could teach. God could teach men everything. You know, this is what many times. Sometimes I think because of human own. You know, like 
I see in the body of Christ where people like to pick up the people because they have special gifts. Or oh, oh, Bob over there, he he operated in that. Uh, we know he's a he's he's that. Or oh, we'll just you know he we you know. Or oh, sometimes they elevate people because they see certain gifts come out of them, and they're like, oh, and then they look at themselves as if God can't use them. And I'm just telling you that that's not how God works. God loves people. You know, you have the mind of Christ. How? By the Holy Spirit living in you, leading and guiding you, speaking to you, making the Word of God come alive in you daily. So that you yourself won't, you know, be, oh, what am I doing? So let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him lead you and let him guide you today. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Okay? And your life will have blessing. I'm just going to say this. Just, just repeat after him. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. In the precious of your son Jesus. Lord I invite your Holy Spirit. To lead me and guide me. To speak to me. To fill me afresh. Even now with your Holy Spirit. From my head to my feet. Lord I need your Holy Spirit to lead me. Lord I need your Holy Spirit to guide me. Lord I need your love. Your joy. Your peace. Lord you said you would never given me a spirit of fear. So today you have given me a spirit of love. Joy and peace. Power. So fill me afresh with your Holy Ghost. Lead me and guide me. Say that. Lead me and guide me today, Holy Spirit. Say it again. Lead me and guide me today, Holy Spirit. Lead me and guide me today, Holy Spirit. Ooh, I feel the anointing. Power. <laughs> Ooh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I, and I speak that over you. That he's going to lead you and guide you. That you're gonna you you're gonna have dreams and vision that he's gonna speak to you. I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit, there's a there's a a, a, a mighty Holy Spirit, the presence of God is coming upon everyone under the sound of my voice. There's a like it's almost like whew, the power of God is falling upon them right now, from their head to their feet, even now, in the name of Jesus. And I speak this by the Spirit of the Lord that He's gonna lead you and guide you, and that you're not gonna be, oh, I don't know where to do, what to say. That the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say in every situation, even in situation you yourself got yourself into. But the Holy Spirit, the wonderful Holy Spirit, will give you the right word to say to get yourself out of that, and He's gonna take you from glory to glory to glory to glory. Say that God is gonna take me from glory to glory to glory to glory. So get ready to see, you know, to see what God is about to do in your life. You know, I'm not just going to pray right now. You know, just weep up. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I just release a special blessing over your people right now. Lord, I ask for your mighty, wonderful Holy Spirit, according to Luke 11, 9, 13, to come upon them afresh in Jesus' name. Fall upon them even now as I'm speaking your word and I'm releasing your word. Fall upon your people afresh. Fill them from their head to their feet. Strengthen them. Empower them. Embold them. Lord, give them strength. Lead them and guide them. Whew. Lead them and guide them. And make yourself real to them. Open their eyes. Open their ears to know what you have for them. Give them dream and vision. In Jesus' name. And make yourself real to them. And again, if you have not given your life to Jesus... You know, I'm just going to just repeat after me, repeat after the words that come out of my mouth. Heavenly Father, I give you my life today. I give you my life today. I confess that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. I confess he's coming back again for me. I confess that, you know, he washed my sins away. He took in all my sickness, all my disease. And today I confess that Jesus saved me. There it is. Just say that. Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. Jesus healed me. Jesus delivered me. So I receive Jesus Christ today as my Lord and Savior. And I thank Him for His love. Thank Him for the joy. And I give myself to Jesus today. 
In Jesus' name. And if, if you said this prayer, you are a child of God. And I pray a blessing and favor upon you. I pray that the mighty Holy Spirit will come upon you and protect you and lead you and guide you. Lord, I pray that you seal them by your Holy Spirit. And let, them, let none of them be missing in that day. And protect them from any spiritual, physical attack. Lead them and guide them to help them find the right church, the right leaders, right people that will be shepherd over them in Jesus' name. Again, thank you, you know, you know, thank you for watching this. And I pray a blessing and favor upon you in Jesus' name. God bless you. God love you. And whew, it's, whew, tune in again. You're going to, you're going to, there's a, there's more that the Holy Spirit want to speak. He's going to say a lot of wonderful stuff in Jesus' name. Be blessed.